Ryan Tannehill, like the team that like the teams want him, is because Jim Irsay, oh he's always tweeting, says that he's a steal at the third overall pick. But I don't see why he thinks that. He just he just loves to tweet. That's true. I think Tannehill will go in the top ten just because people need all the people in the top ten could need a quarterback, and he is the third best quarterback. But I, I don't think he lasts more than five years in the league. I, I think he gets a couple starts, but he's not going to do much in him. I don't, I don't see much in him. I think durability won't will last him five years, but talent will catch up to him, and he's not he's not going to make it. I don't see Tannehill in the top ten at all because he's going to be one of those guys that comes in the NFL, starts, and then gets injured right away, and then not play for the whole rest of the season, and then I, I just don't see him in the top ten. I don't think he's going. I, to, I, I mean, the Panthers are too good. They have Cam Newton. Dolphins need a quarterback, but they don't need Ryan Tannehill. They can, and they can trade back to get him because nobody else really wants him. You know, oh, no, no So you just no. completely threw away my comment about his durability to say he's just gonna get injured. Yes. Yeah, so he's he's gonna, wow. He's not gonna, gonna get injured. All durability into him. Guys, he's I, not gonna get injured. It's just gonna, he's just gonna be like Blaine Gabbert. Blaine Gabbert got his starts in like the middle to late last year was horrible and. I don't. I see him kind of doing something like that, and eventually they're just gonna give up on him after a certain amount of time. And I don't think it'll work out. I think Ryan Tannehill, in the first year he plays, he'll start, and then people will realize how bad he is, <laughs> and then they'll just then he'll just be gone. He'll just be like like a third or a he'll be like yeah. a second or a third string for like the rest of his career. What do you got? And go to some crap team. Okay. Then what do you got? Ten. Uh, nine. So I've got Carolina picking Fletcher Cox. So last year, we got Cam Newton who came in there and he completely kick-started the offense back up. But now they need something on defense. And the defensive line, I think, is where they need to start. Their secondary is all right, but yeah. their defensive line is being held together by little tiny strings. Mm -hmm. And they need to get something better there. Yeah, and I saw that's a perfect pick I for for you know the Panthers because you're you make a good point. Panthers have no defense at all. I mean, if they had a good defense and a good offense like they do now, Playoffs. they could they would be in a they'd be a playoff team, maybe even a second or third round playoff team. You know, like they could they could have a great team. Yeah, I think you always got to build your defense from the the defensive line back, and I think Fletcher Cox will fill that role superbly, and he'll he'll be an everyday starter. I think for most of his career. I think if they draft him. They might make the playoffs, but they're not going to go anywhere in the playoffs. They, right. they don't have enough defense. Three out of ten. And so then at ten, I've got Buffalo Bills picking Melvin Ingram. Again, here's another team who's got a decent defense, but no defensive line, no pass rushers that can sack quarterbacks. They desperately need somebody like Melvin Ingram. And Melvin Ingram is, is durable because he can play on um, wow. uh, outside linebacker. Because there, people, people, um, some of the ESPN people have been talking about how he can, about how he can, um, play a linebacker too, because he played part of it during the season. And stuff. I disagree with the Bills there. I think they'll go with Michael Floyd there, because I don't think they're very strong at wide receiver anymore after Lee Evans leaving. I think they need someone to respark that receiving core. With uh, Stevie Johnson, I think it'll be Michael Floyd. I think Melvin Ingram could wait a couple picks, or he could go instead of with um, he could go with the Carolina Panthers instead of um, who they're gonna pick and just move him back. And I think it's 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 gonna be Michael Floyd. But I thought you said Michael Floyd was gonna was one of the teams that was going in the top five. I said he was a hidden gem outside of the top five. I think he's going to the Bills. I agree with Danny. Here's, well. The Bills have not that good of wide receivers, and Michael well, what's Stevie Johnson top chopped liver? Well, no, they need a second wide. They need well, they need another. Stevie they need to another good person though, because yeah. they they need Michael Floyd because he has the ability and he's everything for the he'd be everything for the Bills. And with the addition of Mario Williams to fill that outside linebacker yeah. rushing role, point, uh, they paid a lot of money for him, so I don't think he'd be very happy if they were taking somebody to kind of go on the other side. Well, hold on. But what, but what are the Packers doing? They're going after trying to get a good defensive end so that teams have to have two good tackles to take out Clay Matthews and another potential pass rusher. That would be deadly. Mario Williams, Melvin Ingram, who could potentially play outside linebacker too. That would be deadly. 
Alright, well that's all we got for today, so turn in tune in next week for our winners and losers of the draft. I'm gonna win.